Three volunteer fire companies in two different counties are hoping to team up to form one mega station to better serve the community. What the merger means to you and how it will save taxpayers some cash. And ahead tonight, at least one man was shot at a West Hazleton bar over the weekend where those shots rang out. Good evening. This is WILN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for July 21st, 2014. I'm Kristen Bazinski in for Ann Gownley. Volunteer fire companies are facing problems nationwide, from lack of volunteers to run emergency calls to dwindling funding. Three local companies are working on a merger to help ease burdens on themselves and the communities in which they serve. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich has an update on this story we first told you about. A public meeting was held tonight in Banks Township concerning the proposed merger of the McAdoo, Keystone, and Tresco fire companies. The move comes in part to the decreasing number of active firefighters locally and nationwide. A committee was formed of four people representing each fire department. They, along with McAdoo Fire Chief Robert Leshko, addressed issues tonight concerning the matter. Leshko feels that joining the forces is the best for them and the communities. I, I think the importance was is to allow us to be able to voice what is really going on to the uh, residents here of, of Banks Township, McAdoo and Klein Township, whoever came to the meeting. Uh, they had some very good questions as to far as where we're going to be putting fire stations and what we may be doing. Some of the questions we really don't have an answer for yet because we need to finish the merger stuff and be able to move forward there. Uh, once we finish all that, we can start determining where we may want to put a station to get us all under one roof. Um, but I, I believe it was very informative to the residents. Uh, I, I I believe they asked some great questions tonight, and I believe we uh, hopefully answered all their concerns. The companies will be merging into the McAdoo Fire Company because of the present 501c3 status and a Medicare license for the ambulance. McAdoo and Keystone are placing 100% of their companies into the merger. Fresco will place fire apparatus, equipment, and the building along with part of the lot. Once we become one group, uh, whatever debt, assets that, that all of us have, they all become one. Um, just as, a, as anybody moving in, or uh, I'll, I'll make it reference to sort of a marriage. Uh, two people going into a marriage may have different debt and, and assets, but once you become married, as we are going to do here, uh, everything becomes one. So uh, we, we all, everybody on the committee feels very excited about this. Uh, there's a lot of excitement going around our firehouses to be able to make this happen, uh, to allow us to potentially get some of of our own family time back. The merger will also save the citizens thousands of tax dollars. Leshko feels that they do have the support from the community. They will meet with attorney Jill Nahi in August to set up the merger resolution papers and the merger should be official by February 1st of 2015. The name will then change to the Southside Emergency Service. Also, anyone interested in becoming a volunteer firefighter should contact their local fire company. In Tresco for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. All right, Julie, thank you. An accident just a few hours ago left four people injured. It happened in Hazel Township. The smash-up at the intersection of 23rd Street and Manhattan Court happened right around 6. This pickup and blue car collided blocking 23rd Street. The driver of the truck along with the driver of the car were both taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton along with two children who were riding in that blue car. We're told the children were in car seats. State police are investigating how the crash happened. Hazel Township fire along with APTS and tech transport all on scene. State police in Hazleton need your help in finding two men who robbed a Verizon store at gunpoint. Take a good look at these pictures sent to WILN by state police of the men who pulled off the crime at the Verizon Wireless Retail Store on the airport road just outside the Laurel Mall. According to troopers, the suspects walked into the store, showed a gun, and then got away with cell phones and some electronic tablets. Now, the first suspect is described as Hispanic, wearing some type of white cloth, possibly a white t-shirt over his face. He stands about 5 feet 10 inches tall with a thin build. He was wearing a white shirt under a black jacket and dark pants. That second suspect is described as a white male standing about 5 feet 7 inches tall with a husky build, wearing a black hooded jacket and some type of metallic embroidery, jeans and black shoes. If you do have any information on this robbery at the Verizon store on the airport road, you are being asked to call state police 570-459-3890. Zero. 
Shots rang out over the weekend in West Hazleton. It happened at a borough bar early Saturday morning. This is where at least one man was hit with bullets shot in his neck. Ivana's bar on West Green Street. WYLN has learned West Hazleton Police Chief Brian Boglio was actually conducting a traffic stop when a passing motorist stopped and informed the chief that, quote, they are straight up shooting at each other at the bar. Officers responded to the bar where witnesses said numerous people were shooting after an altercation outside. Police identified one of the shooting victims as 19-year-old Devon Barlow. He was flown to a trauma center where tonight he remains in critical condition. Evidence collected at the scene also indicates there could have been a second person shot. However, police have not located another victim as of Monday. Anyone who witnessed the shooting or has any information helpful to police is asked to call the West Hazleton Police Department. That number is 570-455-3733 or simply dial 911. Berwick police tell us a domestic violence incident ended with a woman stabbed. It happened on Saturday. 19-year-old Stephen Mercado and 50-year-old John Flores Rivera were found fighting in the living room of a residence at 139 West 2nd Street. 61-year-old Ruth Rhodes was found lying on the floor covered in blood. She suffered a cut to her right shoulder. Flores Rivera was intoxicated and we're told got into an argument with Rhodes and then stabbed her. He then attempted to assault Mercado, who is the grandson of Rhodes. Mercado sustained a minor cut on his right arm. Flores Rivera was arrested facing multiple assault charges. He's locked up tonight, unable to come up with $50,000 bail. The trial of a Wilkes-Barre Township Fire Chief, John Yuknavich, has now been postponed. Assistant District Attorney Michael Melnick was ready to go to trial and wanted a jury selection to begin today. Defense Attorney Barry Dyler said that the delay was caused by a federal grand jury investigation that may result in an indictment. If that occurs, the Commonwealth charges would be dropped. Luzerne County Judge Michael Val heard brief comments from both sides and decided that jury selection will now be on August 6th and the trial for the theft charges against Yaknavage will begin on August 26th. Yaknavage allegedly stole more than $48,000 from the fire department between 2008 and 2011. Former Luzerne County attorney Robert Powell is once again making headlines, now facing a lawsuit filed on Friday by his former colleagues. Plaintiffs include Western PA Child Care, PA Child Care, Mid-Atlantic Youth Services, Gladstone Partners, and Gregory Zapala. They all allege that Powell and his wife took advantage of them in the Kids for Cash scandal. The lawsuit was filed in federal court on Friday and seeks restoration of money lost plus interest in addition to court fees. The complaint states that Powell was at the helm of the scheme to hide millions of dollars in dirty money that was passed through the detention centers and masked as loans and finder's fees. Powell pled guilty in July of 2009 to failing to report a crime related to payments made to two now former judges, also found guilty in connection with the Kids for Cash scandal. He was sentenced to 18 months in a federal prison. The current case will be tried before U.S. Judge Joy Flowers Conti of Pennsylvania's Western District. Wilkes-Barre police are warning residents to be vigilant after an incident where a man impersonating a utility worker showed up at a home on Plymouth Avenue last week. We're told he knocked on the door Friday around 4 in the afternoon and told the resident that he was there to check the water pressure. He was allowed in and went into the kitchen and claimed that he was inspecting for ceiling leaks. He told the resident that the water company had overbilled her and wanted to pay her back. He produced a $100 bill from his pocket and asked her for change. The woman said that she didn't have any money in the house. The man then left the residence and drove away in a late model blue truck. Now, he is described as a Hispanic man around six feet in his mid to late 50s. Police remind citizens not to let any potential utility employees in the house if you have reason to believe that their intentions may be fraudulent. Make sure you call 911 immediately and remember to always ask for company ID. Well, it's a building that's been making headlines for years now, known as the Security Savings Building on Broad Street in downtown Hazleton. The future of the site is currently up in the air. Luzerne County Council proposes selling the building. The city's mayor thinks that's a bad idea and has big plans for it. Now a public meeting is set to hear what the 
public thinks. Tonight, WYLN's Gary Perna talked with County Council Member Rick Morelli on his thoughts. The future of the former Security Savings Bank building is still up in the air. The building is currently owned by Luzerne County and has sat empty for years. Recently, County Council was made aware of an agreement between the former county commissioners and Hazleton City. This was brought to our attention a couple weeks ago that uh, apparently the old administration worked out maybe a handshake agreement with the city and what we found out was it was never really signed on the dotted line. So right now, uh, County Council is looking to find um, a way to maybe work with the city. County Council Chairman Rick Morelli hopes that his fellow council members will see the vision that the city of Hazleton and the downtown Alliance for Progress sees in the former Security Savings Building and hoping that working out a deal with the city is the best thing to revitalize downtown Hazleton. Now I set uh, a meeting aside on the 29th of this month with specifically uh, the people from Hazleton to see how the county council can work with the city. I, from this area, obviously understand the importance of this building and what it means to the project. I can say the other council members do. So um, we're going to have some people come in from the downtown uh, revitalization to explain to county council as to, oh, to uh, why this is so important. And, and hopefully we could come up with a solution sooner than later. Um, I'm in favor of obviously working directly with the city on this. I don't think we should put out an RFP because you could get anybody out there who comes, buys the building, does nothing, and ruins the plans of what they're doing. So I, I'm not in favor of that. And I think that uh, the majority of council, once they see what's going on, will uh, probably agree with me as well. Morelli said he has invited Hazleton City Council, the mayor, and the Downtown Alliance for Progress to the meeting. Recently, the mayor has stated that the Hazleton Art League would be interested in operating in the building. They currently operate in a smaller building on Broad Street between Cedar and Poplar Streets. Morelli said he is willing to work with the city on an agreement. We don't know. Um, the, the one thing that uh, there, where there's a question is how we're going to move forward with the city, and that's something where we hopefully can sit down uh, sooner than later and come up with some kind of a solution. When WYLN spoke with Mayor Yunuzi last week, he said a lot of good could be done if the city would get the building, include selling or leasing it to the Art League. Morelli said the county is not in a position to just give away buildings. What people don't understand is, is if we give up that debt on that, it goes into the redevelopment loan, which really doesn't go into our general fund. So that, that's where one of the snags uh, that we have right now where we have to, uh, again, sit down with the city council and mayor and say, hey, you know, what's fair for both parties? And I think that's the key point here is what's fair for the county. We're not in, obviously in no position to give out properties for free and hand it over, and, and I don't think they would expect that. So my position is I want to work specific with the city, find a solution where it's fair for both of us, and obviously, again, help. The, the downtown revitalization. The special county council meeting is set for Tuesday, July 29th at 5.30 in the county courthouse. In Hazleton, for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. All right, Gary, thank you. In other news tonight, the former Springbrook Water, Spring Water Company property in Wilkesbury is up for sale, and a local college could be interested in buying it. Luzerne County sought proposals from prospective buyers, including King's College. The property was appraised at $124,000 and needs some extensive work. Now, the building has high ceilings and a layout suitable for college use. King's is interested in using the facility for labs and medical science classes classrooms. The property is located at 30 North Franklin Street, which is close to the college's medical building. County Manager Robert Lawton said that the proposals are now being evaluated. The administration will present a recommendation on the purchase offers and which should be accepted before its next meeting set for August 12th. Time to load up on that bug spray, folks. The West Nile virus has now been found in one Schuylkill County community. The virus turned up in Gilberton, just outside of Mahanoy City. Mosquito sample testing was done and found to be positive for the virus on July 9th in the borough. According to DEP, Gilberton is the only municipality in the county where the virus has been found so far. A total of 54 mosquito samples have been collected in Schuylkill. There have been no human or animal cases reported. The state control program had detected the West Nile virus in mosquitoes in 24 of 67 counties across the state. Concerns over heavy truck traffic on a windy, windy hill in Luzerne County has some residents asking PennDOT to stop the trucks before someone gets hurt. Our Gary Perna has the story from Laurel Run. 
Restrictions on traffic coming out of Wilkesbury have some residents in Wilkesbury Township on edge. Residents made complaints to PennDOT that tractor trailers are using the Giants to Spare Hill in Laurel Run to get around some of the road projects. Regional Press Officer James May spoke with WYLN today about those restrictions. We've gotten that word as well that there have been a number of tractor trailers going up and down this mountain. This hill is banned for tractor trailers over 102 inches, so your typical semi truck is banned from going up and down this mountain. There's also a ban in place for any trucks over 96 inches. They should not be going down the mountain. So. Most of the heavy trucks and the big trucks that people are seeing going up and down this hill are banned from going up and down this hill. Now they're doing it anyway. May said PennDOT workers did come out and inspect the area. We did come out and we ensured that there was enough signage that at, at the bottom of the hill and the top of the hill. One of the signs at the top did have a branch going down over top and was blocking it. We had some folks go out and they moved that branch and cleared that, so that's very visible now. According to May, tractor trailer drivers should know not to drive up or down the hill. A tractor trailer driver is actually required to know what roads are uh, permissible and what ones are not, what ones are prohibited and what ones are not. Even if we had no signs whatsoever on this hill, they are still held responsible to ensure that they know which roads they can drive on and cannot drive on. They have a handbook that they're, they're, they're supposed to check before they go out. So even if there were no signs whatsoever on this, on this mountain, they still are prohibited and they cannot go up here and they can still be sighted. May said some of the drivers could just be using their GPS's and those systems will not tell them the problems with the hill. But once they choose and whether they're doing it intentionally, whether they're simply following the GPS, um, for whatever reason, when they're going up and down this hill, they're, it's illegal and they can be cited for doing so. May said Pennut does have signs at the top and bottom of the Giants to Spare Hill to warn drivers about the twists and turns in the road. Just a few weeks ago, tractor trailers were prohibited from using Route 309 because of construction. Residents have told PennDOT that tractor trailer traffic has increased this past week. Absolutely incumbent upon truck drivers to ensure that they know the path that they're going to be taking, that they know the route, that they know what roads are prohibited, what roads are permissible, and to not simply rely upon the GPS. Because the GPS is going to, uh, many times, especially once we've closed uh, truck traffic down on State Route 309, oftentimes the GPS might use a road like this as an alternate route, but simply because the GPS tells them to go up this, this road, road, that does not mean that this road is permissible for large trucks. It is not. And they need to know what the handbook says, what the law says, not simply what their GPS is telling them. Drivers are being urged to use the Pennsylvania Turnpike from Bear Creek to Pittston to reach their destination in the Wyoming Valley. Reporting for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Well, Greater Hazleton gearing up for this year's Fun Fest celebration set for the weekend of September 6th and 7th. We found workers from the Hazleton City Public Works Department hanging Fun Fest banners on light posts throughout downtown Hazleton today. Nearly 60 red and white banners will be displayed on Broad Street from Diamond Avenue to Poplar Street. The flags were designed by Precision Design of Hazleton and displayed business logos of Fun Fest sponsors. The banner sponsorship program was started over 20 years ago as a fundraiser for the festival. Fun Fest Weekend will feature its annual street fair, parade, craft show, and car show. And for more information, you can always contact the chamber at 570-455-1509 or visit funfest.org. And don't forget, you can catch that parade right here and only here on WYLM. Well, it might sound impossible, but think again. Golfing in the dark is not only a lot of fun, but it's also happening for a great cause. The Helping Hand Society is gearing up for its third annual fundraising golf tournament, and it's happening at night. Divots in the Dark has now been renamed this year to the Dr. Paul Rhoda Memorial Night Golf Tournament. Dr. Rhoda was a great friend and supporter of the Helping Hand Society and unexpectedly passed away earlier this year. Helping Hands Director of Marketing, Joelle Martinelli, gave us the details. Uh, it's $50 for golfers to attend, and then we're actually inviting people to just come and party if they don't golf, to just sit around and enjoy a drink and some food. The cookout will be included. We'll have a DJ there for just $30. People could just come and watch people try to golf in the dark and watch all the glow-in-the-dark golf balls and just enjoy a really nice night in, um, in drums at Edgewood in the Pines. Uh, 
Of course, this tournament is possible thanks to numerous sponsors that support the organization. All proceeds will go to the Helping Hand Society for the special needs and typical children that receive services here. And of course we can't thank our sponsors enough. We have a lot of great sponsors this year that we'll be um, celebrating on Facebook and recognizing at the event. So definitely stop on down and support the children in your community and enjoy a really fun and different uh, night out. The tournament is set for Friday, July 25th at Edgewood in the Pines. The event kicks off at 7.30 with the first tee time slated for 8.30. So whether you are a golf pro or a novice, you can head down to Drums and show your support for the Helping Hands Society. Well, a pet owner is asking for your help tonight. A two-year-old female black cat went missing from a home on Ashmore Road in the Stockton area of Hazel Township. The feline's name is Bear. She weighs around eight pounds with green eyes. She's very friendly and affectionate. If you find her, you can contact her owner at 570-436-3981. Let's all help bring Bear back home. A recap of our top stories a little later tonight on WYLN. But first, we check in with Beth for an update on what's happening in the sporting world. And Joe G has the forecast for the work week ahead. I hear it's going to be a pretty hot one, Joe. What can you tell us from the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center tonight? Well, we have the return of the heat coming across our region, but this one's only going to be short-lived because we're going to have to deal with some cooler conditions to follow. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on, but radar-wise over the past six hours, uh, hey, you know what? It's been pretty nice. A uh, lone few showers isolated at best over extreme northeastern PA, uh, say by uh, the Tunkhannock and the Scranton area, just to the north and east of those regions. But the rest of us... Not a bad day, a few sprinkles here and there, a lot of clouds, a few uh, sunshine intervals as well. But what can we expect for tomorrow and the rest of this week? The complete seven-day forecast coming up next. Are you having a party? Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. They offer on-site and off-site catering for all occasions, barbecues, picnics, corporate functions, reunions, friendly get-togethers, graduation parties, any event you're hosting. Chef Tom will prepare the best for your guests. Call Chef Tom at 570-384-2314. Carryout catering is also available. Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. For tickets, call 1-800-RACEWAY or visit PoconoRaceway.com. Hi, I'm Liz Tolan. I'd like to invite you to the second annual COPS event to be held September 13th at the Butler Township Community Center in Drums. The event, which will consist of a 5K run, a 5K walk, a kids fun run, DJ, free cookout for the community craft show, tricky trays, and much more will benefit Butler, Sugarloaf, West Hazleton, Hazleton, and Cunningham Police Departments. When you call these men and women for help, they'll be there for you. Won't you take one day out of your busy schedule to be there for them? Hey everyone, want some close to home fun? Join the Keystone Active Zone Passport Program to create your own backyard adventure exploring parks, trails, and events. It's fun, easy, and it's free. This year's Passport has more than 30 stops. Enjoy Riverfest in Wilkesbury and Pittston. Discover the DNL Trail and more. Register at kazpassport.org. Visit as many stops as you want. Each stop has a question. Find the answers and log them in on the website. Start exploring today. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN TV 35 is looking to hire a highly motivated, energetic salesperson for the Hazleton and surrounding areas. 
Call Liz Cullen, 570-459-1869, extension 1366. Well, definitely you could feel the heat and humidity today. Then we had the clouds move in. And once those clouds moved in, it kind of cooled things down. But once the sun came back out, boy, I tell you what, it brought back uh, the humidity and some of the warmer temperatures. And we have some uh, pretty warm temperatures. In fact, we can call them some hot temperatures on the way. But won't last too long this time around because it's going to be followed by some cooler temperatures by the middle part and ending part of this week. But, you know, today definitely a very humid across our region. There was some spotty showers and sprinkles. Most of our area, though, got through the day without seeing really any measurable rainfall. A few sprinkles here and there. Some areas did see a couple of uh, stray or isolated showers, but that pretty much is about it. And we do have some warmer temperatures to talk about by several degrees before all is said and done there could be areas that will be near 90 this week live 35 skycast doppler nothing to show you from wilkesbury through scranton out through berwick bloomsburg danville williamsport and lewisburg all points remaining dry lively high tire conditions outside our station in hazelton 66 degrees Humidity at 100%, the pressure 30.17 inches of mercury. Just a few raindrops today, but nothing measurable, and those winds continuing to be relatively light. 50s and lower 60s, temperatures bottomed out this morning, and daytime high, 70s and higher elevations. Elsewhere, temperatures managed to make it up into the 80s. Temperature-wise right now, 66 New Angola, 68 in Shenandoah, 71 in Berwick, 69 in Monroy City, and Bloomsburg in 71 in Danville. Satellite and radar. Well, it's quiet here across the northeast. A little bit of some greens, a few isolated showers and sprinkles, but that's about it. See down toward the south, some showers and storms, a lot of clouds as well, but we're going to stay fairly quiet the next couple of days. Now, tomorrow and Wednesday, maybe a shower or thunderstorm, but much of the time will be rain free. Many areas may get through the day without seeing any type of precipitation. And then we're going to introduce you to uh, some more heat over the next few days. And then following that by some cooler conditions as we go into our Thursday. There's the numbers tonight, 60s tomorrow, generally getting up into the 80s. Higher elevations may struggle to make it out of the upper 70s again. And then notice as we start going into Wednesday, we crank up those numbers significantly. The noontime hour, just about every location, if not all locations, will be already in the 80s. So a surge of some a very hot air comes back into our area as we go into tomorrow, and especially in the Wednesday. Wednesday should be the hottest, and then by Thursday, it starts to cool down across our region. On the extended forecast, Summertime conditions are with us the next few days, a shower or storm Tuesday into Wednesday. Then it gets cooler, more pleasant and more comfortable conditions for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and even Monday. And maybe part of the weekend we may have to deal with a shower or a thunderstorm. Hey, we want to thank Washco's Pharmacy for sponsoring our evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The daily 178, the big four, 2481. The Quinto numbers looking like this, 54389. And a cash five, 2, 19, 22, 32, and 40. We'll have more late edition coming up after this break. Bring the entire family to Forks Family Restaurant for one of the best casual dining experiences. Forks Family Restaurant, Route 940 outside of Whitehaven, serves a wide variety of dishes from fresh American and Mediterranean cuisine. Forks Family Restaurant has daily specials and a fully stocked bar for an intimate night out or a gathering for the whole family. It's Forks Family Restaurant, Route 940, just outside of Whitehaven, a half mile from exit 273 off of Interstate 80, open seven days a week. 
ankles? Introducing Ankle Genie, the new zip-up compression sleeve that reduces foot fatigue while energizing foot and ankle. It's a struggle to wear traditional medical compression socks, but Ankle Genie has a built-in zipper, so it slips on and off easily and adjusts to your size. Durable anti-fatigue neoprene soothes, massages, and energizes 24-7. It also provides the compression, and the compression is an essential part to reduce the inflammation, which will allow healing to happen in the foot. Wear Ankle Genie in sneakers, boots, socks, or slippers. Get relief from ankle swells from fluid retention or poor circulation. Expensive compression sleeves don't come with a zipper. Call now and get the Ankle Genie for just $12.99. Order now and you can double the offer. That's two Ankle Genies for $12.99. Call or click now. Call 1-800-520-6089 and get the Ankle Genie special offer or visit anklegenie.com. But hurry, quantities are limited, so call now. 1-800-520-6089. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. People who are chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and heavy hitters. More than what your Cooper tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. move a little slower here in DSLville. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. After splitting a doubleheader last night in Syracuse against the International League's first place Chiefs, the Iron Pigs returned home to play the first of a two-game series with the Buffalo Bisons. Bison, or Buffalo is in the midst of a seven-game losing streak. On the mound for the Iron Pigs, it's David Buchanan. He spent some quality time in Philadelphia with the big team, but in the minors this year, he is 5-1 and one with an ERA under four. Also back on the field for the Pigs, Freddie Galvis. He's had a rough go at it in the first half of the season. First suffering a MRSA infection at spring training, then breaking his left clavicle. But they're both in the game tonight. In the first, it looks like Buchanan hasn't missed a step. After being sent back down to AAA, he strikes out A.J. Jimenez for the first K on the night for the Pigs. Top of the second, and the Bison have one out and one on. Leandro Castro playing in left. Corey Allridge flies out to him but the run will score. Bison up, one nothing. Now to the bottom of the inning and Russ Kanzler heads to the plate. It's a leadoff homer to left center. His sixth home run on the year. Ties things up at one run apiece. Good going for that local boy. This next play though was a doozy in the third with two outs. It'll be Ryan Schimpf to the plate. He knocks one down the first baseline towards Cam Perkins there, but it takes a crazy bound. Schimpf will get a triple, two runs will score, but there's a ton of talk of a ground rule double and the ball possibly bouncing out of play. Dave Brundage, the Iron Pig skipper, he heads out to talk the play over, but after like five minutes, it was pretty long on the field there, but the triple and the two runs stay on the scoreboard. Lehigh Valley will score one more, but in extras, the Bison find their bats and they'll take the win, 11. Four. Checking out other scores from around the minor leagues, the Rail Riders, they won 2-1 over the Gwinnett Braves. And in double-A, the Fightins fell to the Seawolves, and the Senators took the game against Bowie 4-3. More big news for the sports shooting team from Hazleton area from the Scholastic Clay 
Target Program National Team Championships in Illinois this past Friday during the competition with over 20 or with over 2,000 competitors. The Hazelton Area High School Junior Varsity Squad landed a third place finish in skeet shooting while the varsity team took the fifth spot in sporting clays where it is the team cleaned up pretty well on Saturday as well. So congratulations to all those kids who were representing Hazelton Area High School. Also a big shout out goes to Tevin Murray of Ringtown who was recently named the most valuable player of the Big 26. Now that is an all-star baseball game with high schools with high schoolers from both Pennsylvania and Maryland. He pitched three scoreless innings in the contest, racking up four strikeouts. The Southpaw will be a junior this coming year at North School High School. More sports in a few minutes. Until then, Kristen's back on the desk with another look at WILN's top stories of the night. Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. Weatherwood is a privately owned 200-bed nursing and rehabilitation center. Nestled within the quiet town of Weatherly, PA, we offer our residents and their families tranquil and scenic views from just about anywhere in the building. We are located within minutes of Hazleton General Hospital, as well as major metropolitan medical and trauma centers in the Lehigh Valley. Whispering Meadows is a 50-bed secured dementia unit within our facility. Whether you need short-term, long-term, or respite stay, call or stop by today for a tour. Enjoy the great outdoors at Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Place Course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Whitetail is open to the public, and on Tuesday nights, you can stop by for an excellent dinner. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles from Hazleton, and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rock Glen Road, near Rock Glen. 384-2314. When severe weather hits our area, the WILN Weather Center brings you precise weather information you need to plan your day. And now you can get the latest weather conditions online anytime at WILNTV.com. Utilizing the latest technology, meteorologist Joe Garbacic brings you the most accurate weather information available, including webcams to view current road conditions and detailed maps of our area. For a full detailed and accurate daily weather report, watch WILN Weather with Joe Garbacic online anytime at WILNTV.com. Volunteer fire companies are facing problems nationwide, from lack of volunteers to run the emergency calls to dwindling funding. Three local companies are now working on a merger to help ease burdens on themselves and also the company, the communities in which they serve. WILN's Julie Stefanovich has an update on this story we first told you about. A public meeting was held tonight in Banks Township concerning the proposed merger of the McAdoo, Keystone, and Tresco fire companies. The move comes in part to the decreasing number of active firefighters locally and nationwide. A committee was formed of four people representing each fire department. They, along with McAdoo Fire Chief Robert Leshko, addressed issues tonight concerning the matter. Leshko feels that joining the forces is the best for them and the communities. I think the importance was is to allow us to be able to voice what is really going on to the uh, residents here of, of Banks Township, McAdoo and Klein Township, whoever came to the meeting. Uh, they had some very good questions as to far as where we're going to be putting fire stations and what we may be doing. Some of the questions we really don't have an answer for yet because we need to finish the merger stuff and be able to move forward there. Uh, once we finish all that, we can start determining where we may want to put a station to get us all under one roof. Um, but I, I believe it was very informative to the residents. Uh, I, I believe I believe they asked some great questions tonight, and I believe we uh, hopefully answered all their concerns. The companies will be merging into the McAdoo Fire Company because of the present 501c3 status and a Medicare license for the ambulance. McAdoo and Keystone are placing 100% of their companies into the merger. Fresco will place fire apparatus, equipment, and the building along with part of the lot. 
Once we become one group, uh, whatever debt, assets that, that all of us have, they all become one. Um, just as, a, as anybody moving in, or uh, I'll, I'll make it reference to sort of a marriage. Uh, two people going into a marriage may have different debt and, and assets, but once you become married, as we are going to do here, uh, everything becomes one. So uh, we, we all, everybody on the committee, feels very excited about this. Uh, there's a lot of excitement going around our firehouses to be able to make this happen, uh, to allow us to potentially get some of our own family time back. The merger will also save the citizens thousands of tax dollars. Leshko feels that they do have the support from the community. They will meet with attorney Jill Nahi in August to set up the merger resolution papers and the merger should be official by February 1st of 2015. The name will then change to the Southside Emergency Service. Also, anyone interested in becoming a volunteer firefighter should contact their local fire company. In Tresco for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thanks, Julie. An accident just a few hours ago left four people injured. It happened in Hazel Township. That smash-up happening at the intersection of 23rd Street and Manhattan Court right around 6. This pickup and blue car collided, blocking 23rd Street. The driver of the truck, along with the driver of the car, were taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton, along with two children who were riding in the blue car. We're told the children were in car seats. State police are investigating how the crash happened. Hazel Township Fire, along with ABTS and Tech Transport, were on scene. State police in Hazleton need your help in finding two men who robbed a Verizon store at gunpoint. Take a good look at these pictures sent to WYLN by state police of the men who pulled off the crime at the Verizon Wireless Retail Store on the airport road just outside of the Laurel Mall. According to troopers, the suspects walked into the store, showed a gun, and then got away with cell phones and electronic tablets. The first suspect is described as Hispanic, wearing some type of white cloth, possibly a white t-shirt over his face, about 5 feet 10 inches tall with a thin build. He was wearing a white shirt under a black jacket with dark pants. The second suspect is being described described as a white male standing about 5 feet 7 inches tall with a husky build, wearing a black hooded jacket and some type of metallic, metallic embroidery, jeans and black shoes. If you have any information on this robbery at the Verizon store on the airport road, you are asked to give the state police a call at 570-459-3890. Shots rang out over the weekend in West Hazleton. It happened at a borough bar early Saturday morning. This is where at least one man was hit with bullets, shot in his neck. Ivana's bar on West Green Street. WYLN has learned that West Hazleton Police Chief Brian Boglia was actually conducting a traffic stop when a passing motorist stopped and informed the chief that, quote, they are straight up shooting at each other at the bar. Officers quickly responded when found witnesses saying numerous people were shooting at each other after an altercation outside. Police have identified one of the shooting victims as 19-year-old Devon Barlow. He was flown to a trauma center where he remains tonight in critical condition. Evidence collected at the scene indicates there could have been a second person involved. However, police have not located any other victim as of Monday. Anyone who witnessed this shooting or might have information helpful to police is asked to call the West Hazleton Police Department 455-3733 or simply dial 911. Berwick police tell us a domestic violence incident ended with a woman stabbed. It happened on Saturday. 19-year-old Stephen Mercado and 50-year-old John Flores Rivera were found fighting in the living room of a home at 139 West 2nd Street. 61-year-old Ruth Rhodes was found lying on the floor covered in blood. She suffered a cut to her right shoulder. Flores Rivera was intoxicated, we're told, and got into an argument with Rhodes and stabbed her. He then attempted to assault Mercado, who is the grandson of Rhodes. Mercado sustained a minor cut on his right arm. Flores Rivera was arrested facing multiple assault charges. He's locked up tonight, unable to come up with $50,000 bail. It's a building that has been making headlines for years now. It's known as the Security Savings Building on Broad Street in Hazleton's downtown. The future of the site is currently up in the air. Luzerne, Luzerne's County Council proposes selling the building. The city's mayor thinks that's a bad idea and has some big plans for it. Now a public meeting is set to hear what the public actually wants or thinks. Tonight, WYLN's Gary Perna talked with County Council Member Rick Morelli on his thoughts. 
The future of the former Security Savings Bank building is still up in the air. The building is currently owned by Luzerne County and has sat empty for years. Recently, County Council was made aware of an agreement between the former county commissioners and Hazleton City. This was brought to our attention a couple weeks ago that uh, apparently the old administration worked out maybe a handshake agreement with the city and what we found out was it was never really signed on the dotted line. So right now uh, County Council is looking to find um, a way to maybe work with the city. County Council Chairman Rick Morelli hopes that his fellow council members will see the vision that the city of Hazleton and the Downtown Alliance for Progress sees in the former Security Savings Building and hoping that working out a deal with the city is the best thing to revitalize Downtown Hazleton. And now I set uh, a meeting aside on the 29th of this month with specifically uh, the people from Hazleton to see how the county council can work with the city. I, from this area, obviously understand the importance of this building and what it means to the project. I can say the other council members do. So um, we're going to have some people come in from the downtown uh, revitalization to explain to county council as to, uh, to uh, why this is so important. And, and hopefully we could come up with a solution sooner than later. Um, I'm in favor of obviously working directly with the city on this. I don't think we should put out an RFP because you could get anybody out there who comes, buys the building, does nothing, and ruins the plans of what they're doing. So I, I'm not in favor of that and I think that uh, the majority of council once they see what's going on will uh, probably agree with me as well. Morelli said he has invited Hazleton City Council, the mayor and the Downtown Alliance for Progress to the meeting. Recently the mayor has stated that the Hazleton Art League would be interested in operating in the building. They currently operate in a smaller building on Broad Street between Cedar and Poplar Streets. Morelli said he is willing to work with the city on an agreement. We don't know. Um, the, the one thing that uh, there, where there's a question is how we're going to move forward with the city, and that's something where we hopefully can sit down uh, sooner than later and come up with some kind of a solution. When W. Wyland spoke with Mayor Yunuzi last week, he said a lot of good could be done if the city would get the building, include selling or leasing it to the Art League. Morelli said the county is not in a position to just give away buildings. What people don't understand is, is if we give up that debt on that, it goes into the redevelopment loan, which really doesn't go into our general fund. So that, that's where one of the snags uh, that we have right now where we have to, uh, again, sit down with the city council and mayor and say, hey, you know, what's fair for both parties? And I think that's the key point here is what's fair for the county. We're not in, obviously in no position to give out properties for free and hand it over. And, and I don't think they would expect that. So my position is I want to work specific with the city, find a solution where it's fair for both of us, and obviously, again, help the, the downtown revitalization. The special county council meeting is set for Tuesday, July 29th at 530 in the county courthouse. In Hazleton for WYLN's Lead Edition, I'm Gary Perna. All right, Gary, thank you again. Well, it sure is a lovely evening in pretty much all parts of our viewing area. Joe Garbachik kicks in now with more on the forecast for tonight and throughout the work week ahead. He's standing by in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center outside the WYLN studios here in Hazel Township. Hey, Joe. Hey, it's definitely looking uh, very nice right now in the backyard, and it is dry, and a couple of uh, showers here and there and sprinkles throughout parts of the state of Pennsylvania. There you can see on live 35 Skycast Doppler state. Oof. Pardon me, got a bug in my throat, literally. That's what you get for being in the great outdoors of northeastern Pennsylvania, isn't that right? You got a train to go along with it as well. You can hear in the background. Well, I'm going to catch myself a drink of water and then we'll talk about the seven day forecast. You just never know what's going to happen in the backyard, do you? That's the fun part of it. For all your projects, large and small, Bedrock Gardens has it all. Spring is on the way. Plan your summer project today. Rubber mulch and rubber curbing to match. Lots of color choices to pick from. Wall stone, natural stone, delivered right to you. Great selections of rich, colored, quality mulch that will look wonderful all season long. Pebbles, river rock, brick chips. If you need it, we have it. Finish off your fabulous outdoor space with our quality patio furniture and easy-to-assemble fire kits. Screening and everything you need for your summer projects. Delivery available or just stop by and we'll load you up. Bedrock Gardens, locally owned and operated. Call today.
mowing and practically no watering or fertilizing? Hi, Bob Vila here with a breakthrough in grass seed that can give you great green grass. It's called Grassology. Its roots extend four times deeper than ordinary grass to reach the good stuff that's underground, like water and nutrients. And the best part, Grassology reaches a dwarf height, so there's a lot less mowing. Guaranteed. We've all seen bare patches, bald spots, or brown spots caused by pets. Try Grassology. It naturally fights against disease, insects, even weeds, saving you time and money. Call or go online now and get one pound of Grassology for just $14.99. But if you call right now, you can double the order to two pounds. Plus, you can also get a 25-foot pocket hose ultra, Grassology, for $14.99. Call now. You'll be glad you did. Call 1-800-503-3449, and today you can get a special Grassology double offer and the Pocket Hose Ultra. So call 1-800-503-3449. Call now. Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we are talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Does this next sentence sound familiar? Andrew Bynum might be sidelined for all of the 2014-2015 NBA season. Bynum was a Philadelphia 76er two seasons ago, but did not make an appearance on the court due to knee injuries. And he said his knees were bothering him again. Bynum's agent said the former All-Star may be heading over to Germany to get special injections and undergo a specific kind of therapy to help rebuild cartilage in the knee. The procedures are not approved by doctors in the United States. The 2011-2012 season is the last one Bynum played in in its entirety. It was then he averaged nearly 19 points and 12 boards per game. Veteran New York Giants guard Chris Snee, a Montrose area high school graduate, has reportedly announced his retirement after meeting with team officials earlier today. Snee has played with the Giants for the entirety of his decade-long NFL career, helping them to win two Super Bowl titles, but he's recently been battling an elbow injury. He underwent surgery last year, but has been recovering at a slower pace than originally anticipated. The Giants picked up the NEPA lineman back in the 2004 draft in the second round. Now on to our national scoreboard for the night, which is jam-packed with Major League Baseball. Before we check out those numbers, though, don't forget to stay tuned as Joe Garbotic's coming back after the break. Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice for your care. Call us and we'll be there. Visit the Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau website at tournapa.com for the listings of the many events you will find in Luzerne County. From wine festivals, hill climbs, tomato, and kielbasa festivals, you will find it all in Luzerne County. Luzerne County was named the best outdoors destination in Pennsylvania by the official Best in PA website. The Luzerne County Convention and Visitors Bureau will help you relax, relive history, and marvel at the area's stunning natural beauty. Luzerne County, you'll find it right here in Northeast PA. I'm Liz Tolan, Director of Sales and Marketing for WYLN 35. In 2013, WYLN supported the groups you see on your screen by offering either in-kind advertising or volunteer services. 
At WYLN, serving our community is an important part of what we do. Our name says it all. We're your local network. In 2014, we'll be here as we've been since day one to promote and support our local community. From all of us at WYLN 35, thank you for making us your local network. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You'll meet Alana Weaver. She's a young 15-year-old student, an aspiring actress, who was smart enough to notice when her mother got chiropractic care that it might help her as well. Her story and her mom's story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Well, it's looking pretty good heading into tomorrow and the day or two that follows because we're going to look at the return of the heat and humidity across our region. Shower or thunderstorm can't be ruled out as we go into tomorrow and as we go into our Wednesday. Fairly quiet right now here across the Northeast. And unfortunately, we are now past the 60 days with the most powerful rays from the sun. They began eh, roughly around May 20th through July 20th. So you know, we still want to talk about summer, but unfortunately, yeah, well, you know how quick the time runs out. And we've already completed 60 days with the most powerful rays from the sun. But you know what? We can still have some very hot temperatures right through August and even in September. Can't rule that out. And before all is said and done, the seven-day forecast, we're going to be dealing with some heat. Many areas may be near 90 degrees before it cools down once again. 65 degrees are lively high tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton. Humidity at 100 percent. There was a couple of raindrops out there earlier, but again, nothing measurable in the rain gauge and the winds relatively light under five miles per hour. You see temperatures throughout the uh, nation actually not looking uh, too bad for the most part. Heat still continuing to be out toward the southwest where temperatures well into the 90s and lower hundreds. 72 now, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport, 66 in Mount Pocono, 74 in Philadelphia, 72 in Williamsport, 68 in Seals Grove, and 70 degrees in State College. Up in the Wyoming Valley area from Nanticoke through Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, and Lehman, your temperatures continuing to hold near 70, some areas in the lower 70s. Satellites, radar, really nothing going on across the northeast. There's been a couple of uh, stray showers. You can see them out here. But uh, other than that, I think we're going to be fairly quiet through tonight, tomorrow. Maybe a shower or a thunderstorm. That's about it. And then we start to really crank up the heat as we go into our Wednesday. Maybe the chance of a shower or thunderstorm coming across our area. And then it's going to drag in some cooler air for our Thursday, bringing in a drop of the humidity levels and bringing in some more pleasant, cool, and comfortable conditions. It is summer. Enjoy it because it's definitely feeling like it should be for summertime tomorrow as well as a Wednesday. But then after that, the numbers go down. Now, before all is said and done, there will be areas that will be near 90, if not at about 90, as we go into our Wednesday. And then how about 71? We've got 14 degree drop or so in temperature in day, but it's going to feel comfortable. Very nice and pleasant. The rest of the week going into the weekend, 
Maybe a shower or thunderstorm on our Sunday and then staying in the 70s as we go into early next week. I probably should have been paying closer attention. However, it was not, Joe. How about the humidity? I see it's going to be like 85. Yeah, it'll, yeah it'll be, the humidity will be up as well. That's my least favorite part of summer. I know. Do I'm you agree? That. I'm right there. That's okay, because <laughs> in a short amount of time period, I won't have to say tomorrow for tomorrow's weather. It'll actually be today, because it'll almost be midnight. You're right. We are almost to midnight now tonight. <laughs> the late, late edition. Oh, those Lehigh Valley iron pigs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it wasn't even that good of a game. I, I, mean, I mean, it was there for a little bit. But I know. Our team lost. However, I was being blamed for that since I am a Lehigh Valley girl. So I'll some of those, those games go pretty long. I think the one, was it last year or the year before when how many innings? Do you remember it all? It was, you said it was, was after it midnight or 13, something. 13, 14 or so. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, it was. Oh, well. <laughs> it's better luck tomorrow night, Iron Pigs. And I'll be back tomorrow night, which I'm excited about. So hope you'll tune us in then. So on behalf of Beth and Joe, myself and everyone here at WYLN, have yourselves a great rest of this night and almost tomorrow. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night, everyone.